Yesterday, Manitoba set a single day record of new COVID-19 cases, with Dr. Brent Rusin hinting at more restrictions to flatten the curve. And as Manitoba looks into an uncertain few next few weeks, we're turning now to one of our province's former chief public health officers for his insights into the virus and how to handle it. Joining me now is Dr. Joel Kettner, now an associate professor at the University of Manitoba's College of Medicine. Good morning to you, Dr. Kettner. Good morning. So, as mentioned, you served as Manitoba's Chief Medical Officer of Health from 1999 to 2012. During your tenure, you dealt with concerns about viral outbreaks, but really not on this level. Uh, that's true. Um, uh, in fact, you could say we had a pandemic every year with influenza. It meets the criteria for a pandemic, but uh, right now we're using this term in quite a different way, and even the pandemic of 2009 H1N1 influenza uh, or other similar kinds of challenges that got our attention like SARS and at one point Middle East Respiratory Syndrome which are both coronaviruses. Uh, there's never been really a response to a respiratory virus uh, like we're seeing now uh, around the world and, and in Manitoba. I mean sometimes we talk about the virus causing all of these problems but we have to also uh, think of the response to the virus, which is causing quite a bit of uh, issues too. So I just want to put in a couple of quick caveats. You know, I'm not criticizing government decisions or our public health leaders. They have a lot more information uh, about what's going on than I do, so I have to be respectful and humble about that. And, and I'm also not recommending that people should, you know, should reject or not follow the directives or advice. But I do have questions. Uh, about about the policies and and the uh, attempts uh, that are being used, uh, not just in Manitoba but elsewhere, uh, to try to interrupt the spread of this virus or control its um, its impacts. So, what are some of your questions and concerns, Dr. Kettner? Obviously, we've had restrictions, we've had lockdowns in the past, and we could be facing um, more restrictions going forward. So, what are kind of your main concerns? Well, in public health, we have to look at the big picture, and we have to think about uh, not just one disease, but all diseases and injuries and causes of morbidity and mortality. And we have to also think about the impacts of our interventions, the the side effects uh, we call them in medicine, but but the harms of interventions. And I think we're learning more about what those harms are and how they're maybe unfairly distributed and affecting people uh, differently based on you know single parents, uh, people working for hourly wages, small in, uh, enterprises which are closing, big effect on the, ec on the economy and our deficit of government, impacts on education. I mean, we're learning more and more about what those harmful impacts are. So what's the benefit? Well, the benefit is, as we know, to try to flatten the curve. In other words, to try to prevent our hospitals being overrun with cases and to try to reduce the mortality, especially premature mortality. How much benefit do these, do these lockdowns and restrictions have? No doubt they have some impact, but we have to put this in perspective. So here's a few numbers which I think your listeners might find interesting and important. 4,500 cases in Manitoba. That represents less than 0.3% of our population. That's one in 300 people so far have, uh, have had a positive test result. 58 deaths, that's one per 25,000 Manitobans. One in 25,000 Manitobans have died. That's less than 1% of all deaths. In other words, less than 1% of all causes of death. ICU admissions, 15, that's about 20% of our ICU beds. In a typical uh, flu season, uh, the majority of ICU beds are taken up by people with a variety of viral and bacterial causes of acute lung injury or pneumonia. And we, so far from estimates, from descriptions of our capacity for ventilators, we're using up less than 1% of our ventilator capacity. So Dr. And Kettner, now, what, now, what are I you... I want to add one more point, hospitalizations, oh, 83 hospitalizations, that's less than 3% of all our beds. So we just have to put into perspective the impact that this uh, disease is having. And and, and on the one hand, and of course, one other very important point about this uh, disease, it's primarily affecting older people. 80% of our deaths in Canada are in people over the age of 85 and, in, and residents of personal care homes.